So 96 years of Oscars, we've never had a single Sikh-centric film. So to, to watch a Sikh stand up on that stage is what I call a revolution for our ancestors and for our children. Hi, this is Nita Vaseen. I'm here at the International Sikh Film Festival where we are going to meet the founder of this organization and we are going to meet filmmakers and some actors. So let's start our show. Congratulations, Mandeep Ji. Another year of International Sikh Film Festival. Uh, tell us about the festival. How old is this festival? and? Uh, what is something new about it? Well, this festival started in 2002, and it started right here at Rubin Museum with an uh, exhibition which was called I See No Stranger. And since then it's evolved, and um, you know we've had this festival in many different places, um, including Asia Society, and at the Paley Center, and now we're back to Rubin Museum. And um, you know, we missed a couple of years during the COVID, but since then, we're back again, and um, we have filmmakers from all over who come and join us, um, from U.S., from Canada. Uh, we've got film from India, from Rima Paseen, and um, so we're very excited. We are starting to see the diversity in movies again that we had seen kind of gone missing in the last few years, but we are very excited with this future of um, Sikh film, making and you know putting a highlight almost a spotlight on our culture i think this idea came to me post 9 11. i'm involved with the american community at large also i served on the board of hofstra for many years so we were having a breakfast meeting in which i had lots of other american friends with me and frank zarb and david mack were with me and i told them i belong to sikh religion which is the fifth largest religion in the world he said mr bindra how come i never heard of it so that kind of stuck home a point that maybe we have not done a good job in trying to educate people. So the fault is ours. You know? So we have to educate people who we are, where we come from, because we are more Sikhs than Jewish people. If really? you look at the numbers, yeah, we are the fifth largest, Jewish is the sixth largest. In America? In the world. In the world. In the world. Wow. So it's the fifth largest religion in the world. And many people, most of people do not even know about it. So the idea was why not bring up a foundation, not religious, so we said let's put up a Sikh Art and Film Foundation, who is through the medium of arts and films, let's better get a better understanding of who Sikhs are, the, of course the religion, the culture, the identity, and also to build bridges between the Sikh community and the American community. So each year we, go through, we get a set of films that we go through. <clears throat> And we're looking for films that are diverse, that have good content. We're looking for films that uh, represent, um, that talk about the history of sex, that talk about the culture of sex. And then we look for films that, that, um, that deal with the issues that the Sikh diaspora is going through. And this, year, this year's films do all that. We have films that talk about the legacy of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. We have films that deal with the contemporary issues, like Conor Kalsi's film, Manpreet, uh, we have films that deal with the, you know, with the sort of uprootment of Sikhs and Hindus from Afghanistan, Bewatna, film made by kids. So it, this year's film festival, like in the years past, also has a good, diverse representation of, uh, you know, of everything, of all, all the genres. So how many films are you showing here today? We are showing 10 films here. We're showing five films in the short section two in the documentary, and then we are showing three films in the premiere section. Yes, we are part of the community, so we have we have certain obligation. Uh, and uh, it's not that, you know, we have to do these things, but we enjoy doing this, because this is our community, um, especially with uh, Mr. Bindra, Mr. Tejiji. Uh, we've been part of this festival from day one. Um, again, you know, it's a worthwhile cause. Uh, I was reading a um, some quote, it says, you know, how do you preserve a culture and all that, so what Mr. Bindra is doing through this festival, uh, through this platform, I think it's one of those things that really preserve and enhance the culture of Sikh Americans over here. And of course, you know, uh, the whole overall community. 
So that's our motivation. We, are, we have to be there for the community. So over the years, marketing has gone move more to social media, website, and everybody knows in the New York City area that the festival is going to happen around November, December time frame. So that's when the buzz starts. Actually, people reach out to me. We haven't heard anything. I'm like, yeah, that's because we still haven't figured out the films yet because we have so many films that were submitted this year. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes even the filmmakers themselves help us with the media marketing, like Bewatna, for example, which is playing right now on the uh, plight of the Hindu and Sikh families who, had to, who were forced to leave Afghanistan, which was their home, their what and their land. Um, they, the, the kids from Boston, that whole group have done such a great job with posters, other things, social media, that it actually enhances what we need to do, right? If the filmmakers themselves are going out and marketing the film, they're saying, hey, we're playing at a Sikh International Film Festival in New York. It just helps us. Well, so right now we've Oscar qualified, so that's uh, one, two steps before actually nomination. You have to, as a short film or actually any film, you first qualify in a category or a short animated film, so that's our category. And our hope is uh, we'll get shortlisted, and then after shortlisting nomination. It all happens really quickly, so we're like within a month or in a month's time, we'll hopefully be shortlisted and nominated. We've gone through many film festivals, we've won awards across different film festivals, and we're hoping uh, our journey is going to go through March in a place known as Hollywood and uh, more to come. Well, the inspiration actually came from Ryan Westra. We've known each other for 10 years. Uh, Ryan, I I'll let Ryan talk about this because he really is the, the force behind. He wanted to tell this story and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him talk about this. Yeah, so about 10 years ago, Vishwajit and I worked on a live action documentary called Red, White and Beard, where he dressed up as his alter ego, sick Captain America, went onto the streets of New York asking people to acknowledge their biases right in front of him. And I was just blown away by how people opened up to him and talked to him about serious issues that usually are very difficult to talk about in a way that's fun, enjoyable, engaging. So ever since then, Vishwajit and I have talked about wanting to do another film together, one that tells his whole life story, and one that could introduce Six and Sikhism to America, many for the first time, in a way that's fun and interesting and captivating. After 9-11, times were very hard for Six and many other communities. Um, I actually saw a cartoon by an American cartoonist, which actually featured a Sikh, but in a very positive light. And that gave me the spark and idea that maybe I should start cartooning. So in the year 2002, I started cartooning. I called them Sick Tunes for 15 years. And one of the cartoons that I created actually was a Captain America with a turban and beard. Hi everyone, uh, I'm the executive producer on the film called American Sikh. It's a movie which celebrates our uniqueness, our pain, our rise. And it's less than 10 minutes, but you feel a journey of a lifetime of Vishwajit Singh, whom I call my superhero. बहुत प्यारी फिल्म है एंड वी वांट ऑल योर लव एंड कहते हैं कि जो आप कहते हो तो सरस्वती माँ जुबान पे होती है जो कहते सच बात है सो 96 इयर्स ऑफ ऑस्कर्स वी नेवर हैड अ सिंगल सीक सेंट्रिक फिल्म सो टू टू वॉच अ सीक स्टैंड अप ऑन दैट स्टेज इज व्हाट आई कॉल अ रेवोल्यूशन फॉर आर एनसेस्टर्स एंड फॉर आर चिल्ड्रन तो उसके लिए जितनी जान लगेगी लगाएंगे I used to be seen as an outsider, but now people see me as a villain. But I got a strange idea. If I'm going to stand out, I want people to see me as sick and an American. Seven years ago, when we started Nishkam TV, our mission was how we can make our youth a good storytellers. Because they may not decide to be filmmakers or journalists, but filmmaking teaches you a lot of soft skills, which typically they don't, they learn very late in their life. Skills like how to be a good public speaker, how to do writing, how to do, how to work in a team, collaboration. Uh, sometimes you have your ideas, conflict management, because at the end of the day, the best idea should win. So my purpose of Nishkam TV was to teach these kids soft skills through a medium which they love, which is film. They love watching films, 
they want to be YouTubers. So I thought this is a good platform and that's why these kids are so interested in telling stories. Afghanistan to leave us 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 to तालिबान आ गए सी तो तालिबान ने टेक ओवर कर लिया सेगा ले चले अदा अफगानिस्तान तो साढ़ा रहना उ बहुत मुश्किल हो गया सी क्योंकि वो सू कन्वर्ट करते सके मुस्लिम से कि तो तू कन्वर्ट होना पेगा तो असी कन्वर्ट नहीं होवे मैं दो चीज़ा कभी नहीं भूल लीए एक मेरी माँ माँ प्यो और मेरी कंट्री ये तीनों मेरे दिल से Initially, the the challenge was uh, really to uh, to be able to serve with uh, turban and beard, and that you know because it's the most visible change to the uniform that the military has seen uh, to date. But the the issue is that six have served proudly all over the world, Absolutely. right? We are uh, a big part of the Indian Army, even though we're only. Two or three percent of India's population. We're twenty to thirty percent of the the military there, yeah. and we're a big part of the British Army. Where our the Canadian Defence Minister is sick. So when the United States military saw that you know this change uh, needed to happen, you know we we pushed them, uh, but they they eventually they eventually uh, changed policy. But it took us it took us almost eight years. So, did you reach out to the community, Sikh community, or you just decided that I'm going to lead this my own, being an army person? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Look, army always leads the way. So, right. Uh, but it it yeah. does take it does take uh, sacrifice from from people that are willing to to push for change. And so, for me, it was my family, and my family sacrificed uh, just along uh, right alongside me. And we, uh, you know, it was not easy, and I think that a lot of that is captured in in the film. In the Recruiter, he said, "Are you sure you want to join the military? They're going to take their pound and a half of flesh. I want to serve. I want to do this for my country. I want to do it for my family." But I serve like this with turban and beard. Basic trainees get haircuts. They shave every day. We want soldiers to keep their individual identity. We also want them to feel like they are becoming part of a team. While the Marine Corps supports your ability to practice and observe the tenets of your faith, it may impose restrictions. You may have to remove your articles of faith, you shave your beard. It's not like a baseball cap you can just put on and take off. This is a part of our, our body and our, our soul. When they said no, you know, you have to cut your hair, that's when it became a true fight. I'm happy to, to give my arm or my leg. I'm happy to bleed for my country. I'm happy to die for my nation in service. But I can't give you that which does not belong to me. There were a lot of comments on all the articles that had come out. You know, some of these comments were very hateful. Uh, I remember one comment said, if I ever saw him during combat, uh, I would shoot him. Hey! Hey! But there's going to be a price to pay. I didn't understand it at the time. So, but, but it was true, there was, uh, there's a price to pay. I was fortunate to spend time with Dr. Kim Singil. He was a very special and unique soul. And this is a 53 minutes documentary uh, out of 200 
hours of recording. We try to edit it. It took us months and months to edit it because every single moment is very impressing. But the idea of the documentary was to inspire our new generation how a common boy from a village have rose uphill as an international scientist and vice chancellor of a university, not only and also very hum human soul doing tremendous work in the rural education development of northern India by opening 129 schools. Dr. Kem Singh Gill is a world-renowned agricultural scientist. He was a wheat breeder. India was facing hunger in 1960s and it was Punjab Agriculture University which was the harbinger of green revolution in the country which made India self-sufficient. And major role was played by Dr. Kem Singh Gill and his team because he brought in uh, Mexican varieties and then uh, from Punjab they developed their own varieties and which ultimately led to Green Revolution.